this wind is insane. Seriously, maybe 70 miles an hour. We're just kind of not even getting back down. Everything's turned to boilerplate. It is just dangerous, icy skiing. It's really dangerous conditions right now. Jackson Hole to go to the Grand Tetons and possibly, hopefully, maybe ski the Middle Teton. The reason we're doing this is because of the smog. Yeah, somehow, because of the mountains that we enjoy so much, the air gets trapped. It's kind of like Mother Nature is trying to uh, smother us with our own pillow pollution that we've created. And so here we are, and we just, you know, there's no visibility, it's ugly, it's cold. And so we're getting out, we're trying to get to the Tetons. We're gonna go and try and ski the middle Teton. I think the drive's going by pretty fast. Yeah. Probably because I don't have four kids in here complaining, wondering when we're gonna get there. We haven't asked me once when we're gonna be there. Just getting our first glimpse of the southern end of the Tetons. And I'm a little bit worried because those clouds look like they could cause problems. I love to adventure, but I don't love it until I'm in the middle of it. I actually hate showing up for an adventure. A lot of times if someone came up to me and said, hey, let's just go home tonight. I'd be like, yeah, let's do it. I got a, a cool drive, I got to see a place and go home because I can build up so much anxiety. That's why every morning I wake up to do an adventure, I'm in a bad mood, I feel terrible, I got stomach ache. But as soon as I get going and start climbing a mountain or whatever and the sun comes up, then I'm like, oh, I'm so glad I'm here. I hate adventures at the beginning. These are skins. These go on the bottom of the ski, I can go it's smooth going that way, and then it's sticky going back the other way. Let's see if I can get close in on that. So, anyways, you could slide them forward, but they don't slide back on the snow. Just attach these at the top of the ski, and then I just run these skins right down the center of the ski so that you cover all of the base except for the edge, the steel of the edge. There and they just stick right on to the ski. All right, good morning. Oh my gosh, I've got all sorts of stuff on my pants. It's one of the perils of eating food in the dark. A little bit of a surprise when you turn the light on. Just pull out behind you. Okay. No, Blake just got pulled over, <clears throat> and it doesn't look like he has registration. It turns out that they have nighttime speed limits here, which is interesting. It's not nighttime; it's morning time. I guess it's dark. Dark time. Dark speed time limits. speed limits. So it's a great way to start the morning. Getting a ticket. I feel I feel some sympathy for Blake. And I'm not a man who feels sympathy easily. We, uh, we just got pulled over by what could possibly be the nicest police officer in the world. He asked us if we had any questions, if he could help us out with anything, if anyone knew we were going skiing. It's an incredibly nice police officer. That's good. Speed. That's we wait. 60. That's what, oh, now I'm speeding again. I'm going to set the cruise control. Yeah. Great way to start the morning. just that way and stay just headed towards that canyon let's just stick to this and it starts to go left we'll go right okay that good yep I 
just don't feel very good. We've only gone about two miles. I'm not really tired. I just don't feel good. I kind of feel like I might have uh, diarrhea coming on, which isn't uncommon on adventures. Maybe it's a little bit of anxiety. Maybe it's a little bit of eating too much on the road trip. Too much soda yesterday. You can see the canyon we're gonna go up behind us. And it looks like we've got some weather moving in. Like I said, we're hoping to beat that storm. Not supposed to be huge, but up there at 12, 13,000 feet, it'll be enough to uh, ruin your day. Holy cow, that's beautiful. Everything up to this point, the last two and a half miles has been flat. But, what, what was it, what was the calculation you did? I think we're gonna be 1,500 feet per mile the rest of the way. So, it maybe was, more. It was nice, Well, but it looks like it's about to get steep. Looks like fun. I'm glad to see you're not doing any better than me. Not frozen enough to support my food, but too frozen to... not the proper technique. Let me just destroy the shitty skin track. I've only slipped backwards a handful of times since I last turned on this camera. But this place is just cool. Actually awesome would be a better word. Not a lot of places deserve the title awesome. I think the Tetons, one of those places. No, it's right, dude. We got like, still have 4,000 feet of climbing. 4,000. In like a mile. In like a mile and a half? Is that? Yeah. What the? That's steep. Might be hard to believe looking at the weather just now, the blue skies and stuff, that bad weather is on the way, but the real storm is probably just behind these mountains, just waiting to uh, hit Blake and I pretty hard. Yeah, when we were coming up here, we knew we might get into some weather. But we're just getting to about 9,000 feet. You can see up ahead, where we're headed is all socked in with a storm. We can hear the wind whipping up there. It's definitely ominous and have no idea what we're in for. We could get up there and be a complete disaster and have to turn around. We might get up there and it'll be fine just with kind of lower visibility. self-arrest with my pull. So glad you had to whip it? Yeah, totally. That whip Pull that up me. and show what that's for. This may look like some kind of medieval weapon. Or zombie apocalypse tool. Yeah, something you'd use in a zombie situation, but this is called a whip it. It's just an ice axe attached to a ski pole. And what it does is it allows you, if you're slipping, to just eat. Like, 
you can make that noise if you want, it's not mandatory, <laughs> into the snow, and then you drag it, and it slows you down, or you go to put it in the snow and it flips around, and it stabs you in the eye, and then disembowels you. <laughs> Either scenario is possible. Uh, I just hope that the, the first scenario is the one that I encounter. And I just had a little practice down there. The weather has definitely turned on us. We went from skiing in long sleeve t-shirts to now it feels like we're at 20,000 feet. Yeah. But anyways, this weather is, it is windy and the snow is pelting me in the face. I have to get on some goggles. Well, we're gonna change, get on some warmer gloves. Oh, like Oscar the Grouch over here when he comes out of his garbage can. <laughs> Pissed off. <laughs> All my stuff's falling onto the ground and sliding and blowing and everything's filling up with snow. Uh, just too much stuff to put on, take off. I can't feel my fingers at all. I got these stupid things dangling from my hands. I'm like a five year old. maybe 70 miles an hour. I don't know, it's uh, definitely too dangerous to try to summit. And we, we're scared about even getting back down. Everything's turned to boilerplate. It is just dangerous, icy skiing. So we're gonna try to get a little bit lower and find some other stuff to ski, and make our trip worthwhile. We're in really dangerous conditions right now. Windy part, although you can still hear it ripping and roaring. But behind us, I mean, it's just getting too windy. Visibility was almost zero. I'm sure you can hear the wind and see it. Let's be quiet. Shh, shh. Stop talking if you're watching this. Only through some miracle, we're not getting hit by that. So, anyway, we're headed back down. Hopefully, we'll be out of this wind soon because I can't feel my face. Uh, yeah. possibly be the worst descent I've ever done on skis. I mean, it wasn't even really fun at all. But I don't regret coming up and giving it a shot because adventure-wise, that was something I've never done or a place I've never skied before. So I think it was, it was totally worth it. But as far as like a skiing descent, you know, something that's fun, that you think of like skiing at a resort, it wasn't. It was terrible. The snow like would was so crusty that you'd stay up on top of it and then sink down in and when you try to make a turn and it just throws you off. Really, really punchy. Even though the skiing was terrible, I, I don't regret coming at all because the adventure aspect of this trip was really great. I mean, bad weather, something we've never done before really awesome rugged mountains and so i'd say it was a success overall something i'm really glad i came to do we just pulled into a little town called lava uh, and it's famous for their hot springs. I don't think there'd be a town here if there wasn't for the hot springs. I'm gonna get my soak on. And I talked Danny into coming. I knew he'd come up with excuses to not want to do it. I think he has, he's a fear of germs. 
But this is a really clean place, believe it or not. It looks clean. I mean, just from looking at the town <laughs> by itself. I that was sarcasm. There's nothing unusual about this. <laughs> These two guys having a soak. These two guys having a soak. There's no law against that. Maybe a hundred years ago there was, but currently there's no law about uh, against you guys having Cowboys soak. used to soak. These are the springs. They start at like 112 degrees at one end, and they gradually get cooler as they go to the other side. And I think the other side's maybe like 103. So, anyways, this is supposedly the hot pool where if you have raw meat in your pockets, you can broil it as you sit uh, in the water itself. Then when you leave, you can enjoy the warm snack that you've created during your soak. 